Hello, welcome. Welcome to another Ignite special episode at the Virtual Ninja Show. And today it's really special because it is live from Seattle. And I'm not in Seattle, so I'm asking my friend Javier to please tell us all the good things about this new Seam and XDR integration. Javier, take it. Hello, thank you, Heike. So here we are from the Ignite floor at the Microsoft Ignite event in Seattle, Washington, where we have announced some exciting, super exciting innovations, uh, specifically about the unified security operations platform. And with that, I have Tiander with me here uh, at the Ignite floor. Uh, Tiander Turpin. Hello, Hello, Tiander. Hello. So what is that we announced today? Well, Javier, it's a really a milestone today for us because today we are and have announced the unified portal for SOC operations. Mm -hmm. And what is that? So we're unifying the Sentinel world and the Defender world together, which is amazing because it gives so many benefits. I will talk to that in a bit, but that's the announcement today. So what are we gonna use now? The security center portal from Defender, or we're gonna use the Azure portal from Sentinel? Which one is the one that is gonna be the, the central place? Right, right, good question. So, so for the folks who know Defender today, mm -hmm. that is the look and feel, the portal that we are going to use. So you could, you could also consider that we're pulling the Sentinel world into the Defender portal, okay. which is actually how it looks like. Okay, so cool. Is there any pricing changes uh, according to this? So I'm gonna still pay for Sentinel the same way I did in the past. Is there any changes in the pricing? No, we're not changing anything at all with regards to pricing. So what you are paying today with its Sentinel or your E5, E3, E5 probably is the, staying the same. Nothing changes to, what, to that extent. Got it, got it. And can you tell us a bit more about what are the experiences that have been unified? So is it all the experiences that we have in Sentinel have been unified in the new portal? Is it just some of them? So the objective and what we, what we achieved today is that you have a single portal where you have all the Sentinel navigation menus available for you. So you can have your workbooks, your playbooks, all of that. But the biggest in innovation here, what we're introducing, that you no longer have to pivot back and forth. Mm -hmm. Remember folks, folks who are watching the, the podcast, today you have the Sentinel UI, the portal, you have the Defender portal, and each and every time you need to have more details, you're going to pivot over to the Defender portal and back, mm -hmm. and, back and forth, which kind of increases increases the time to triage and totally. resolving. So what is great about this is that now going forward, we have what we call the unified incident queue. Right. So you will have one single place, a portal to visit, where you have the incidents coming from either Sentinel, Defender, or a combination of the two, where you can start your investigation, your triaging. A second big addition is, is that now advanced hunting in Defender, you guys know advanced hunting, mm -hmm. and there's a search, kind of log search in Sentinel, right. is now going to be combined in the single portal. So which means that if I do advanced hunting now, I can do hunting and searches, not only hunting, but searching using triage across all the Sentinel tables, all the Defender tables in one query. Wait, 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 wait. So up to now, if I'm a Sentinel customer, I had to send the data from Defender into Sentinel. I don't need to do that anymore? No. So we're going to wow. address cost as well, because this was a fair feedback from customers saying, hey, I'm paying for Defender, I already have the data. Why, Microsoft, are you asking us to ingest data in Sentinel? Because I already have it. Mm -hmm. Double dipping, you're, you're asking me to double the price. That's no longer being the case, because we That's already awesome. have the data in Defender. No, no new reason to move it. Super cool, super cool. One more question. So if I switch to the, this new unified security operations portal, can I still access Sentinel in the former Azure portal? Yes. Okay. So we are anticipating that customers will still use Sentinel separately, separately Defender. And we're not forcing them to, to move, right? Because we're, we're offering this innovation for specific customers mm -hmm. who are using both, and it gave us feedback on back and forth, back and forth. But still, if you are going to use the unified portal, you will remain to, to be able to use the Sentinel portal. Okay. So if you want to stick there, stay there, that's fine too. But okay. if you want to have that unified experience, go to the unified portal. Perfect, perfect. One more thing that I heard this morning is that we are also announcing 
new attack disruption capabilities. What is that about? So two things. We already have attack disruption in Defender. Yeah, yeah. We're going to uh, expand that to have more attack disruption at machine speed, as we're calling it. Mm -hmm. But the biggest announcement, together with all the big announcements, I'm calling it big announcements, <laughs> because they are big, right? Indeed. We also have kind of SAP attack disruption. Now, what is that, right? So if we have an attacker trying to compromise and doing bad stuff in your environment, mm -hmm. At machine speed, we're going to detect that and without the analyst having to do all the triaging, investigation, what's this, what's that, we're already blocking that attack, right? Yep. Before anyone knows it. And we give you information, why we did that, what happened, all of that, and which is amazing because that's not on the market available. Totally. Totally. And we're doing more advanced stuff with attack disruption. So let's assume I am an attacker, right? I'm going to kind of come into your environment. What we are doing as well, we couldn't, we're putting kind of, consider it like breadcrumbs in that attack. Mm -hmm. So when the attacker proceeds, we are putting some kind of, things, enticement things for that attacker to deviate and to explore what's there. Yeah. So kind of honeypot technology, right? Got it. So that's also going to be there. Awesome, awesome. Why don't we do a demo of all these things and show it to the audience? Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's go for it. Let's, let's do show it. it. Okay, Tiander, so I see you're sharing your screen now, so, yeah. uh, so what should so, we do? So we're looking at the Unified Portal as we speak. It looks very familiar, right? right? And it should, because there's no learning curve. That's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a look at the first place where a SOC analyst would go, would be really the incidents, to look at the incidents. Okay. Now, if you click on the incidents, it will open up the incident queue, and now we have multiple incident sources, alert sources in there where you can apply filtering. So if I want to look at the holistic view of it, so you will see all the incidents, right? If I have delegations in my SOC operations, I can filter on the service, it might be Sentinel, it might be a Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Cloud, all of that. And you can filter back and forth like, like you used to do that in Sentinel or in Defender, but now in the single portal where you can see a holistic view. Now, if you click on, on an incident, you would open it, you can see more information and you will see kind of the information that Defender already knows today, like the attack story, like the assets, uh, all, all of that. Now, that part is all, also going to be unified. So no longer it will be only entities from Sentinel or Defender, but it will be multiple entities and we can look at, hey, where did I see that, uh, that entity and, and all of that. Got it. Now, the next step obviously would be that if I need to investigate, I would typically do a run a query, right? I right. want to get more information and this is the moment that you would pivot over to advanced hunting. And advanced hunting can be used to just run a query to get more metadata, information, all of that. Now notice in this environment that we now have the Sentinel tables available. So you can search through the schema if you look for a specific table. You can also kind of look at your saved queries that you've saved in Sentinel. We will not uh, kind of make sure uh, that you lose investment. So s any SOC operation, any customer has, has put lot, lots of in, in investments in that. We're bringing those over, right? And making sure that you, you can use it in the unified portal. I see also here functions, right? So this yeah, is how all the functions important from Log say, Analytics. Yeah, I see here exactly, now my functions, exactly. right? Exactly. So we have a lens that we're grabbing this, the Sentinel information and displaying it here. Uh, with the same experience as you have it in Defender. Cool, cool. So now here, for example, I can join, I can union, union tables from join, Defender and Sentinel, right? Right, exactly, exactly. One question that I had, uh, what happens if I want to retain my Defender data longer than 30 days? Right, so so as, as the audience know today, there's a, there's a retention of, of 30 days, right? If you want to extend that, uh, that retention, we can still leverage Sentinel, the workspace, okay. and put the data there, so as long as you would like. Gotcha. So we recently updated to 12 years, so if you want to keep it for, for that amount of time, we have log tiering capabilities for, for saving cost, all of that. So that typically is here. And right from here, you can create detection rules and all of that to make sure that you grab 
the next time when this happens, you can create automatically uh, an incident from it. Yeah, I see that, for example, now we can create an analytic rule. Exactly. An analytic rule with this query that we're doing in the, exactly. in the dashboard, right? And, and notice how smart we are when you select a table from Defender. It becomes, obviously, a detection rule from Defender. When right. you select a Sentinel, it's going to so be So this analytic. lights up depending on which table right, you select. Exactly. Right, right, exactly. Right. Yeah, and I see that you, for example, did here a query uh, for the signing logs table, which is a Sentinel table only, right? right? And you can just do, do your regular stuff, like yeah, a, a yeah. chart if you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great, great, good stuff. Um, I also noticed that we have now here a Sentinel menu item, right? Right, right. in the right. Defender portal. What is that? Right. So we, we didn't want that that for specific Sentinel features, you would go back to the Sentinel portal. Right. That would, would kind of kind of break the experience a little bit. Break right? the experience. Yeah. So what we did is we put all the sentient navigation in here and kind of kind of updated that to the to defend the look and feel. Got it. So on every every navigation you click on, you will get that in in line, in product, in portal experience. Right. For example here I see that you went into analytic rules. Here yeah. we can See your active analytic rules in the in the in the workspace. Right, I can see my right. templates. I can enable new analytic rules. So, like I did it in Sentinel, it's just that the look and feel. The look the and feel portal. is a bit different. So, yeah, we it uh, it is different, but it's now depending on where you come from, right? For yeah. Defender, it's yeah. not different. Yeah. For Sentinel, it's different. But it feels like home for Defender users. Yeah, right? it yeah. feels like home, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. cool. And, and the beauty is is that we we maintain the investment that you educated your SOC analyst and 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 gave training. We're not putting a new product, net new product in the market, right? Mm -hmm. So the learning will be kind of there and, and the investment will be kind of uh, sustained here and you can leverage that. So what we also did in Sentinel is, is have the notion of, of a content hub and, and the word actually explains it. It is the hub where we centralize all the content, right? In the, in the past, we had several places to go to, right? And, and what, we, what we wanted to do is give the customer, the SOC analyst, a single experience. So do, do I need content? Am I looking for content? Well, go to the content hub and you will find all the content. You can search for different artifacts, mm -hmm. uh, analytics rules, playbooks, um, all, all of those different things. And from there, with a single click, you can go ahead and install it. And that will take, a, take away all the hoops that you needed to go through. So that's a, the, the experience that we grabbed from the Sentinel world and unified that as well here. Now, while you're on the screen, I will also talk about optimization, right? Ooh. So optimization is a new kind of feature that we brought into the Sentinel world and will be in the unified portal. Now, what is that? Now, I know that customers have been struggling about hey, how am I going to optimize my cost and making sure that I leverage what I have invested in mm -hmm. the most? Now, optimization will go ahead and look at what kind of data sources do I have, mm -hmm. which is great, but am I using those data sources? Am I using queries? Am I using detection rules, which, which will take benefit of those data sources? If not, you're pretty much ingesting data for nothing. You're paying for it and right. you're not doing anything right, right, with right, right. it. So we will give you a heads up um, and saying, hey, you have data, but you're not using it. Would you like to go to Content Hub and install a detection rule that takes advantage of it? So those are the kind of optimization efforts that we're taking, but we're going to take the next step, right? We're going to say, hey, if you uh, are looking for certain coverage and you want to reach that compliance or making sure that I'm covered for a specific kind of, I don't know, compliance reason, mm -hmm. then we're going to make sure that you're covered with that artifacts, with those data sources, logs. Mm -hmm. and, but the other way, I mentioned the earlier example, if you have a detection rule, mm -hmm. and this is important for the audience at home, right? If you have a detection rule and you think, hey, I'm safe because I have a detection rule. If something happens, I create an incident. Now, guess what? Some customers have detection rules, but they don't have the data sources. Ooh. So the detection rule will never fire. Right. So this is something that we are addressing too. So yes, yeah, so for example, here I see Tiander that in this environment, we got a recommendation about this Cisco Umbrella DNS right. table, right? That is telling me it's low usage because we didn't see or this feature didn't detect any analytic rules or detections in this table for the last 30 days, right? right. And then it's giving me the, the recommendation of, hey, like, go to Content Hub where there might be some detections exactly. on that data type that will, you know, make it useful for you, right? Exactly, exactly. That's pretty cool. So on a regular cadence, we're going to explore and make sure that we up to date, right? That we check the uses of this specific table and tell mm -hmm. you, hey, 
you're not using it very much. Right. So, and this is the interesting part, right? We are helping customers to save costs, but at the same time, if they decided to offboard all the tables, uh, we get less revenue. But we think it's better for those customers to, to help them with of this. Of course. So it's a, it's a great decision that we took. So besides this specific recommendation of you know, uh, adding more detections to the data type, to the data source, do we have any other type of recommendations uh, or optimizations for the customer, like maybe moving to a different tier? Or right, what? right. So good point. So let's assume that, that I am ingesting a, a table, a vo high volume data a, yeah. a table, like maybe a firewall or a router or a device, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we're giving the recommendation, hey, you don't have any detection rules against it, mm -hmm. but you might not want that to happen because I need that table just for a correlation or hunting, forensics compliance, or, yeah. forensics. So, so you need that table. So then the second uh, recommendation is, hey, why don't you move it to a cheaper storage tier? Right. Because we want to make sure that you're saving costs, right? Mm -hmm. So with this, and if you click on this, we will move it to a, t to a cheaper tier. That's mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. what it is. Cool, cool, cool. We, we will guide you through all the mechanics, how to move the, the table. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, great new feature. This is brand new value that we're bringing into the new unified portal. So that's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I also saw that there's some things in the threat intelligence um, section in this new portal that were not available in the uh, Sentinel portal, right? Like for example, the ability to do advanced searches on uh, threat intelligence, right? So you can now do more advanced right. searches based on conditions and things like that, right? Right, right. Customers gave us feedback that we did have threat intelligence in Sentinel, but we didn't give them kind of a really good kind of search capability with conditions and filtering and all of that. So we are improving that in the, in the unified portal awesome. to make sure that you can have and or discuss conditions and all checks of, the, of those. Fantastic, fantastic. And also I noticed, and I saw it in one of the, our, our private preview channels, uh, that now we have better ways to manage our IOCs, right? Like right. Uh, the indicators of compromise that we import into exactly. uh, Sentinel. Yeah, the bulk um, import, right? The bulk yeah. import, yeah. yeah. The bulk yeah. import and the pre-ingesting rules, right? They yeah, be here. yeah. Cool, Tiander, thank you so much for the demo. So what else did we announce uh, this week or in the last few weeks? Uh, I heard something about copilot, security copilot. Yes. Today we uh, announced in the, at the keynote security copilot. Sacha actually mentioned uh, we are a security copilot co uh, company, right? which means that we are going to embed security copilot across all our products and services. Mm -hmm. But what's really relevant for, for this talk and uh, what we do in a unified portal yep. is kind of helping the analyst to translate very complicated uh, queries to make sense of, hey, what's this incident about? What's this entity? So you can, instead of that, you will ask security copilot, hey, where did I see this IP? before, mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. did, did I see this host before? Can you summarize the incident attack for me? But also looking at, at code, right? If, if an attacker is using maybe encoded PowerShell, right. I, can, I can ask, hey, what's this script about? What does it do? That's is it super impactful? Helpful. Is this entity kind of a high risk? More of that, which will be kind of summarized. And the beauty is that it can give you this summary in advance, right? Without me having to go to triaging, I can get a summary immediately, fantastic. which saves a lot of analyst time. Fantastic, fantastic. So thank you so much, Tiander, for uh, this great introduction to uh, the new capabilities that we have in the new unified sure. security operations portal. And uh, with that, uh, back to you from uh, the Ignite <laughs> floor. Heike, thank you. Wow, Tianda and Javier, thank you both so much for walking us through this new experience. I hope everyone is eager to try it out. Uh, we need to wait until early next year, but until then, you can come back and watch more episodes of the Virtual Ninja Show when we talk about Ignite specials and other great new experiences. Talk soon. Bye.